Hi boys and girls, I'm the reading teacher and today we're going to talk about a strategy called visualization. In fact, you're going to help me practice visualization. Visualizing is an important strategy for good readers because it helps you to connect to the story. And it's really neat because when you visualize, you're actually making a movie in your brain. You're listening or thinking about the words that you're reading and it becomes a movie in your brain. Your movie doesn't have to look anything like the illustrator's version or like your classmate's version. It's your own thoughts and pictures in your mind. Today, to help us with this strategy, we're going to use a book called Bear and Wolf, and it's by Daniel Selmeri. Daniel Selmeri is the author and the illustrator of the story, which means he wrote the words and drew the pictures. But we're going to do something different today. I am not going to show you the pictures. I'm going to read it. And while I'm reading it, your job is to listen. Use clues that he gives you in the story, the images, the beautiful words, and make a movie of your own. Make a picture of your own. When we're done with the story, then I'll go back and show you the pictures that Daniel Selmeri drew. Deal? All right. I'm going to show you this first page, though or the cover of the story, Bear and Wolf. Because good readers, before they even open up the story, they start thinking, don't they? And we're thinking, could this book be fiction or nonfiction? Hmm. Well, the clues that I'm getting are, it is an illustration, not a photograph, which sometimes can mean nonfiction. Also, the title, Bear and Wolf, makes it seem like they're buddies or friends. So I'm gonna think fiction. All right, here we go. Bear and wolf. Remember, make a movie in your mind. It was a windless night and glowing snowflakes fell through the trees deep in the forest. Bear was out walking when she spotted something poking out from the glistening white. At the same time, Wolf was out walking when he spotted something poking out from the glistening white. When Bear got closer, she could see it was a young wolf. She could see the wolf's pointy snout, smooth gray fur, golden eyes, and wet black nose. When Wolf got closer, he could see it was a young bear. He could see the bear's big round head, soft black fur, deep brown eyes, and wet black nose. Are you lost? asked Bear. No, I'm not lost. Are you? asked Wolf. No, I'm not lost. I'm out for a walk to feel the cold on my face and enjoy the quiet of the woods when it snows. What are you doing? I'm out for a walk to feel the cold under my paws and to listen to the crunching of the snow as I walk. Do you want to walk with me? asked Bear. Sure, said Wolf. Bear and Wolf walked through the quietly falling snow using their eyes and ears and noses to take in the snowy woods. They both had thick, warm fur that covered their whole bodies. They were creatures that were made to be comfortable in the very cold. Bear and Wolf smelled the wet bark of the trees and heard the small sounds the snowflakes made on their fur. They slowed down to look closely at the different shapes. High above the trees, Bird was gliding through the sky, feeling the snowy air on her wings when she saw through the branches two shapes poking out from the glistening white. She flapped down to rest on a branch to get a better look. Now she could see it was a bear and a wolf walking together side by side. Bear and wolf continued on through the woods, looking up to notice the bird and passing quietly under the branch where she sat. The snow was slowing as they came to a great clearing in the woods. Both Bear and Wolf had been here before, but that was in the summertime when the forest was green and bursting with smells and sounds. 
In the summertime, this place was a round blue lake. Now it was a huge flat circle of white. They walked out onto the frozen lake and looked down. Bear cleared away some snow with her paw. They looked through the cloudy frozen water and saw fish floating asleep in the green depths. I have to go now, wolf, said Bear. I have to go back to my cave and sleep through the rest of winter with my family. I have to go now also, said Wolf. I have to go back to my pack. We are following the scent of caribou and have many nights of running ahead of us. I really liked walking with you, said Bear. I really liked walking with you too, said Wolf. I hope that we'll meet again. And they turned from each other and walked away. Bear spent the winter deep in a cave with her family, sleeping dreamlessly in her thick, warm fur. And Wolf spent his summer, winter, running silently with his pack, looking for the caribou. Some time passed, and winter faded from their part of the earth. The snow melted. The grass and leaves grew again, and birds sang in the tops of trees. The forest was bursting with sounds and smells. Bear was out walking through the deep grass when she spotted something poking out from the swaying green. Bear and Wolf walked through the gentle breeze, using their eyes, ears, and noses to take in the awakening woods. All right, now I'm gonna go back and show you the illustrations that Daniel Salmeri drew. And you're gonna see if they were similar to yours. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't, and that's okay. Here's when bear meets wolf and wolf meets bear. And they ask each other if they're lost. There they go on their journey through the snow. They're listening to the sounds, looking at the snowflakes. Here's the bird. She's watching them. And there she is perched on her branch. <gasps> They're finding the lake. Do you remember when it said Bear cleared some snow with her paw? That's what they see. And this is from the perspective of in the lake looking up at the bear and the wolf. They decide that it's time for them to go back to their homes. So they go in different directions. Bear goes back to sleep with her family. Wolf goes on a caribou hunt. And then spring arrives. There's the lake. And Bear, he sees Wolf again and off they go together. Was that similar to what you were thinking in your brain? Daniel Silmary helps us out with our movie because he uses such beautiful words and images that we can really help. It really helps us make our picture in our minds. I love this. In the back of the book, sometimes it tells about the author. And what it says about Daniel Silmary is this. Since he was able to, Daniel has loved making pictures and telling stories. How many of you like making pictures and stories that go with those pictures? I want to encourage you not to stop. Keep it up. And I know it might be summer, but find a quiet time during the day and make those pictures and tell those stories because who knows, maybe someday it will be in a book. All right, friends, the next time you listen to a story or read one, see what you can create in your brain and be a great visualizer. I hope you have a great day today. I'll see you soon.